Hi and welcome to Hoffman's Hot Seat. I'm Tom Hoffman with One to One Media. Joining me today is Amanda Sachs, Senior Director, Worldwide Customer and Partner Experience at Microsoft. Today we'll be discussing techniques for enabling a customer-centric culture in an enterprise company. Amanda, thanks so much for joining us today. Thanks for having me, Tom. What are some things enterprise business leaders can do to drive customer-centric culture and decision-making? Well, I think there's a number of things that leaders can do. At Microsoft, we've been on this journey for a number of years. We have some great learnings, but we're also, of course, on a journey that we recognize we still have some opportunities. A few things that I'd say are key to how leaders can help drive a customer-centric culture. The first few are around building a foundation, setting the stage and standards for how employees operate and what the company stands for. At Microsoft, customer focus is both a value and tenet. All employees are aware of and they understand that that's an expectation for how they behave and represent the company. It's also a core competency. And what that means at Microsoft is when we hire, when we promote, and when we look at performance, we look at how employees perform against Microsoft's core competence. And customer and partner passion is one of those. And so it's really embedded in how the entire employee life cycle works. I think a second thing is once you set that stage, how leaders really hold their organizations accountable for the customer and partner experience. And right from the top, our executive compensation, a large portion of our exec bonuses is tied to customer and partner net satisfaction. And so I think that really shows that our leaders are walking the walk when it comes to being accountable for CPE, as we call the customer and partner experience at Microsoft. The next thing they do is they focus on a plan. So how do you make sure that your employees understand what the priorities are for their group? They all have customer and partner experience plans by organization, and they cascade that into what we call commitments. So every employee from our top leaders right to our front line have customer and partner focused commitments that talk about what their role is in the CPA journey and what specific accountabilities and metrics they're responsible for driving. And the next thing is really building that into what we call the rhythm of the business. At Microsoft, our fiscal year starts July 1st and ends June 30th. And from the time that we kick off the year, every month, every quarter, semi-annual and annual, we have customer and partner experience plans and metrics status check. So in every discussion that we have about the health of the business, it's not just about revenue or market share or marketing, but a big portion of the discussion is how do our customers feel? What are they telling us? and then driving action plans to improve any areas or opportunities that we have. Okay, great. So it sounds like an approach towards continuous improvement then. Absolutely. We set our goals at the beginning of the year, and then we evaluate how we're doing against them. Sometimes we increase them, and other times it's really about improving where things might be off track or have opportunities for improvement. So with respect to tools, what tools and resources can be provided to drive voice of the customer integration? Voice of customer is a key component of our plans and of our commitments and really part of the culture that we drive. Encouraging employees to leverage tools and resources, encouraging them to own customer escalations. And we have a number of feedback tools at Microsoft, some of them built right into the product. An example of that is called the Customer Experience Improvement Program that allows customers to give feedback in an automated way on their experience with our product. And it goes to our product groups to allow them to make improvements of current versions as well as future versions of that product. We have a number of escalation tools. So if our employees encounter complaints, opportunities, or even inquiries about something that they may be having challenges with, they have access to a number of tools across the company that help them efficiently and effectively resolve them and subject matter experts that are really on point for partnering to resolve those issues. We look at those issues across the company to really try to find trends. What are systemic issues that are happening? What are common trends among product feedback? And then we publish reports and action plans really to address the trends that we find. And then of course, like most companies, we do surveys and roundtables and studies to assess at a higher level, what is the perception of Microsoft? How do people feel about their relationship with us? And that's a core component of the plans that we have and the commitments that we drive to improve. Of course, we have product betas, where before we release a product to the general public, we have thousands and millions of customers around the world that use that and provide us feedback so we can make changes before our official release. And then more and more using online feedback forums and social media to get real-time pulse of customer feedback. 
There's some other tools I would say as well, not specific to feedback, but even readiness. We have training that we offer to all employees. In fact, we have mandatory training for all employees, as well as additional trainings that employees can take to improve things like account planning and how to drive great conditions of satisfaction conversations with their customers, how to improve voice of customer insights and improvement plans, and a number of trainings and readiness that we offer across the company. And then, of course, we have reward and recognition programs. We have global programs that all employees are eligible for and participate in that recognize great customer and partner experience performance. And then there's also a number of local spot award programs that enable peer-to-peer -peer recognition of when someone has done something great in the area of customer and partner satisfaction, maybe someone did something heroic, or even built a systemic tool to be able to gather feedback or to improve the experience. That sounds fairly comprehensive. Can you cite examples of how some employees are making business decisions or driving change based on customer feedback? Absolutely, and I think Windows 7 is probably the best example that we can provide to date. We say it's a product that was built by customers and for customers. We have input from over 10 million customers, so feedback on different features, on functionality that they would want. A specific example of that is the Windows taskbar. Customers told us they wanted a really easy way to pull in a favorite into their Windows taskbar. And in Windows 7, customers can pin any program into the taskbar, so it's always an easy, quick click away. A second area I mentioned earlier was our customer experience improvement program built right into the product, so customers can offer feedback to Microsoft just as they work and go through their regular day, as opposed to having to send us feedback explicitly, call us, or online. And so that's a great resource that we make a number of changes and resolve things like product bugs, prioritize content for service pack, and look at desirable features for future releases. Another area that I would call attention to, especially in an enterprise organization, is around account management changes. So we had feedback from some customers and partners that when we change personnel, the transition wasn't as effective and efficient as possible. And we identified this was a global problem. And so we put a program in place that provided a step-by-step -step process, measurement, tools, and best practices, and really allowed us to track how many transitions we were making be thoughtful and deliberate about them, and make sure that the transfer of knowledge was seamless to the customer. And in a short period of time of implementing this globally, we were able to actually identify through survey feedback that we were able to not only neutralize the impact of the customer of an account management change, but in some cases even improve their satisfaction with the company. And so that was an area recently where we took action on feedback and we were able to turn it around in quite a short period of time. And then a broader example of that is our satisfaction measurement results. We do a very large study where we gather feedback from thousands and thousands of customers across many geographies, all the different types of customers Microsoft interacts with, and that is the core to all of our planning, to our commitments, to our executive compensation. And we're really encouraged that recent results show that as we've improved our listening systems, and as we focus more and more on being that customer-centric culture that we aspire to be, that the feedback has improved over time. And so we know that we have some opportunities still, but we're very encouraged by this. And this isn't just shown by an internal Microsoft survey, but actually recently the American Customer Satisfaction Index was released and showed Microsoft's score going up from 70 to 76 in 2010, which is an 8.6% increase, and it's the highest score we've ever had. So both our internal measures as well as a number of external measures are telling us that acting on customer feedback, focusing on the customer and partner experience, that we are moving in the right direction and moving ahead on our journey to be the number one satisfaction company in the world. Great. Well, Amanda, thanks so much for sharing Microsoft's experiences with us today. Thank you, Tom. It was a great opportunity. We appreciate it.